And the punishment that was meant for us, you put it upon your son. Yes. Yes. Give you honor and grace. We we'll give you honor and thanks this morning, Father. Give us grace this morning that we might preach. Yeah. Your holy word. Yes. Give those the listener grace that this word might be heard and applied. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God for mercy. Yeah. That's good. As we look in the book of Romans, we'll find that the theme of Romans is being justified. By faith. Mm -hmm. Being justified, justified by faith through grace. We find that this is really the theme of the Roman letter. Right. This, this letter declares not only the sinfulness of the Gentile, but also the sinfulness of the Jew. Right. Mm -hmm. And we'll find that in this entire letter, as the first 11 chapters deals with doctrine, and uh, chapters 12 through 16, really deals with application. Right. Mm -hmm. But I want you to see that in this particular scripture, God shows us emphatically in Romans that man cannot save himself. Yeah. Right. Amen. He shows that it is a work of his grace. Yeah. And a work of his mercy right. mm -hmm. that man is saved. Yeah. And this work is shown very clear as in chapter 1 in the gospel. We find that the righteousness of God is revealed therein in the gospel. Yeah. It's revealed from faith to faith yeah. that the just shall live by faith. How it lives. We see the righteousness of God revealed in the gospel that not only was there a sin problem mm -hmm. due to the fact that Adam transgressed against God, uh -huh. but we find that in the gospel, God dealt with the sin problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And he gives that remedy through his son, Praise him. Jesus Christ. Praise him. But man cannot know that by just looking at creation. Yeah. It's special revelation that's given through the gospel message, whereby not only does man know that he was placed under sin because of Adam's transgression, mm -hmm. not only does man come to find out that he is a sinner and he's helpless and he's under the wrath and judgment of God, but it also lets us know that Christ came to be that propitiation yeah. for our sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that God dealt with the sin problem once and for all through his son, Jesus Christ. Right. This chapter will show you that God's people will be saved from the punishment of sin. Yeah. They will be yes, saved from the power of sin. Yeah. And they will be saved one day from the very presence of sin. Right, Salvation is one word with different phases, but, the, but God is working in them all and bringing his plan That's to right. his fruition. Yeah. He will be glorified, I tell you. He will be honored because salvation is of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We find in the book of Romans, even in chapter 9, mm -hmm. we'll be glorified. Thank the Lord. Where God not only deals with the Erecting of a nation. Mm -hmm. The choosing of a nation out of all the nations on the earth. It was Israel that he chose to set his love upon. Yeah. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, you can look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, chapter 6, look at those three chapters. But uh, you'll find that God chose to set his love upon yeah. Israel. And he did not choose Israel as a nation for the fact that they were the greatest of nations, but they were the fewest right. of all nations, right? right? And God was determined to fulfill the promise that he made to their father. Yes. But we find here that not only does it deal with the erecting of a nation and the choosing of a nation and how uh, the, the Messiah would come to a lineage that God had chosen, right. you also find that not only does God not only did God choose a nation, but even all those in that nation is not Israel. All right. That's right. It's clear. It's not the children of the flesh right. that are coming for the seed. Right. But you have to understand that within Israel, there is a remnant that God has chosen. <laughs> right. yeah. Within Israel. I think about when John the Baptist was on the River Jordan, and he was baptizing. Yeah. You'll find that the Sadducees and Pharisees came down to observe the baptism or, or to watch it, see what was going on. 
But you'll find how John addressed him. He didn't give them uh, any terms of endearment, if you will, but you find John addressed him as a generation of vipers right. That's right. who has warned you to flee from the wrath which is to come. Right. He let them, let them know, don't say it to yourself that we have Abraham for our father. Right. For God is able to raise up, up these stones, yeah, children, unto Abraham. Yeah. So you'll find that God was calling that nation to repentance. But who are those that will truly repent? You're going to find that not only did God choose a nation, but God chooses individuals. Yeah. Right. 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 Praise the Lord. This is very controversial. Like that. Very controversial in the church world today. Right. Right. Uh, amongst evangelicals. Uh -huh. Because they have been given a conception of God that is not biblical. Right, right. That's right. That's right. But you'll find in scripture, because he is sovereign, and we define sovereignty, we're saying that God can do what he wants. That's right. Yeah. Whatever he wants. Yes, sir. With whomever he wants. Yeah. However he wants. Yeah. And no man gives him permission to do it. He does it because it is his good pleasure. Yeah. God is sovereign in scripture defines him as being sovereign. Yeah. Scripture knows nothing of a God who takes orders from men. Right. Scripture knows nothing of a God who feels that he has to do one thing for another than he has done for the other. No, God does all things after the counsel of his own will. Yeah. So you'll find in Scripture that God is defined, the God of the Bible is defined as being sovereign. Yeah. And man is forced to get over that. Yeah. They are forced to accept that. He will not repent for calling himself right. sovereign. Yeah. He is all that he is. We find that God chooses individuals. As we find when we look even in verses 14 and 15, when it spoke of uh, Isaac and Jacob, for instance, it says, not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that called it. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. It was through Jacob that God had chosen to, consent, to continue uh, the seed of faith through which the Messiah would come. Right. It was not the seed of Esau right. through which the Messiah would come, but it was through Jacob. And God made this determination before time began. Yeah. Right. He made this determination. It was not based on the criteria by which we would make a determination. Right. But God made this determination. And he says, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind for most people that when God had determined something to be before the subjects who abhorred this determination were created, the first thing that comes to mind is that God is unjust. Right. Right. That's what happens in the carnal mind. Right. Uh-huh. They say that God is unjust because they say it's not fair. See? They say that it is not right. But do you understand what you're saying, brother? Uh -huh. You are saying that God is sinful. You're saying that God has a liberty. Mm, right. And my friend, that accusation in itself is sin. Right. That's right, brother. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love what the Lord tells Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. He says that my ways yeah, nah. are not That's good, your brother. ways. Yeah. My ways are higher yeah. than your ways. Yes, sir. As high as the heaven uh. is above the earth. So are, are my ways, or yeah. my ways are above your ways. Yeah. God is not like man. Yeah. Many times in many circles, they want to reduce God down to that of a mere man. Right. And at the same time, they want to exalt man mm. and deify him. You'll find that that is the error yeah. of sinful man today. But he says, what should we say then? Is that a righteous of God? God forbid. That's saying that God 
cannot deal with anyone unjustly. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. There is no injustice yes. with him. Right. right. In fact, that is inconsistent yes. with his character right. and his nature. Right. I want you to notice what the scripture says about the Lord's character. We look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse number 4. It reads that he is the rock. Right. His work is perfect. Right. For all his ways are judgment. Right. A God of truth and without iniquity. Yeah. Right. Just and right yeah. is he. Yeah. In Psalms 145, yeah. in verse number 7, I want you to notice that it says that the Lord is righteous in all his ways yeah. and holy yeah. in all of his words. Yeah. Right. I want you to notice in Revelation chapter 15, yeah. you find that this is the time of the great tribulation and God is hammering this world with judgments after another, after another, bringing judgment upon the ungodly world. And I want you to notice what is said of him in light of these judgments. You'll find in Revelation chapter 15, it says, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, eight, seven angels, Having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Mercy. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass uh -huh. mingled with fire. Mm. And them that had got the victory over the beast, and over his image, yeah. and over his mark, yeah. and over the number of his name, yeah. stand on the sea of glass, yeah. having the hearts of God. That's good. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Mm. And the and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Yeah. Lord God Almighty, yeah. just and true are thy ways, yeah. thou King of saints. Yeah. Who shall I fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? Yeah. For thou only art holy. Praise him. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Praise you him. see, the ungodly world, as they're being hammered and pulled by God's judgments, you see those who have gotten the victory over the, over the beast, over his heart, and over his image and his name, you see them setting up on a sea of glass, and they have the hearts of God. Whereas, for the ungodly world, mm. it's a time of fear, yeah. it's a time of judgment, right. and you'll find, for God's elect, it is a time to praise, it is a time to worship, because God has acted consistently yeah. with his character right. and his nature. He's holy. Amen. Yeah, yeah, he's just. Right. Thank the Lord. It's good. So holy that that is supreme attribute mm -hmm. mentioned in the scripture. Mm -hmm. we look in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Mm -hmm. In those seraphim as they yeah. fly yeah. around their altar. I'm excuse me, around the throne of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are they crying out? Are they saying, righteous, righteous, righteous? Good, good, good. Merciful, merciful, merciful. No. Holy. 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 Praise Him. He is utterly separate from sin. I want you to know that the Bible talks about that in Him is life. And there is no darkness mm -hmm. at all. Oh. Oh. Right, yeah. None whatsoever, beloved. Right. Notice it says, for the first thing that might be asked is this. They'll say, well, there's got to be unrighteousness for God. And that's the, actually the accusation even of the church world today. Right, sir. But you'll find that, they say it's controversial, but you'll find that the scripture knows nothing of this controversy. It says in verse 15, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it's not of him that will, nor of him that will, but of God that showeth mercy. You'll find that when Moses wanted to see his face, yeah. when he wanted to behold his glory, 
that he's the son of God. It was a Holy Spirit bearing witness of who he was, yeah. of who he is, yeah. through signs and wonders, yeah. showing his Messiahship. They saw these with their natural eyes. Yeah. They could not deny that these miracles were being done. Yeah. That's right. But you'll find self-righteous Jews They had a works salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. They had another way that they thought that would take them into life eternal. Right. Mercy. Their hearts were, they saw it with their eyes. And that goes to show you today that just because you see something does not mean that it will have an impact on you. Right. Just because you see something and you are exposed to something, that is not a, that's not evidence of conversion. Amen. You'll find that the more that you see, all it does, it will count against you in the day of judgment. Right, right. It's good. It, if you will, it comes against you in the day of judgment. Your damnation and condemnation will be greater because of what you've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. You are held responsible for the light that you have seen. That's it. That's good, brother. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, the punishment in hell will even be, the degree of punishment that is, will even be dependent upon what you have seen mm -hmm. and what you have witnessed. Where's that? That's right. Oh, I want you to know something today that Jesus addresses this lack of response of these cities. Mm -hmm. And this is what he says. He begins to thank God, the Lord of heaven and earth, because that's the God, that's the God of the Bible. That's right. He's the possessor of heaven and earth. Yeah. And it says, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and foolish, and have revealed them unto yeah. babes. Yes, sir. Oh, I think about something today that him hiding these things from the wise and the prudent. Those that are lifted up in their own selves. Mm -hmm. Those that are, who think that they have a better way than God. Mm -hmm. Those who feel that they have a way wherewith they can get to life eternal. I mean, it's the conceit and the arrogance of sinful man. And you'll find that God hides, if you will, hides his truth from them. Yes, they didn't hear the words. But they were not able to see Christ for who he was. Right. And, and, and guess what? This work of hiding was attributed to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Praise God. That's right. Christ himself said, God, the reason why they're not able to see is because you have withheld it from you them. Did it. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Right. Not only does God withhold, but you also find that because of man's sinful nature, he is incapable and unable. That's right. To yes, he is. come to this glorious truth. Mm -hmm. He is unable to illuminate his own eyes. Right. He's unable to humble his own heart. Right. He's unable to cause faith to arise right. in his heart that he might believe God. Right. He's unable to do this. Good. And not only that, the Bible lets us know in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 4, that if our gospel be hid, yes. it is hid yes, sir. to them that are lost. Mercy. Who's the agent also working in this particular area? Whom the God of this world had blinded the hearts and minds right. that believe not, uh -huh. lest they <laughs> should see the light of the glorious gospel. Uh -huh. In other words, the God of this world is busy giving sinful man what he already desires. Mercy. That's why we have such contempt against this prosperity doctrine that's going on today. Right. We have such contempt. We hold it in contempt. Why? Because it offers sinners what they already want. Mm. It offers them what they already desire. Yeah. You don't have to be born again to want a home and to want a car, to want a good job, to want a fat bank account, to want heaven and all of these things. You don't have to be born again, but you have to be born again to want that. Yeah. You have, God has to intervene yeah. 
if you are to desire that's good, and to right. love him. Right. Yeah, that's good. Right, but these Amen. corruptible things that are here today and gone tomorrow, these are things that the world wants. Yes, yes, it's so true. Mm -hmm. And it takes no transformation. Mm -hmm. It takes no repentance. It takes no change right. for them to accumulate these things. Right. But my friend, in order for them to know the glory of God's wonderful grace, it takes a transformation. Yeah. It takes a, an illumination of the heart and the mind. Yes. Oh, it takes open heart, spiritual open heart surgery, I tell you. God removing a stony heart yes. and giving them a heart of flesh. Yes. No wonder we are able to say, knowing these things, that this salvation is of our God. Yes. Notice he says this. And you've revealed them unto babes. Yes. You've revealed them unto those that are unenlightened. Mm -hmm. To those who are not intelligent. Mm -hmm. To those. Beautiful. I'm going to tell you something. When you look at a baby, babies can't do anything for themselves. Right. So true. Babies can make a mess. Mm -hmm. But you've got to clean it up. Right. Mm -hmm. Babies can, can throw things on the ground. But you have to pick it up. I'm talking about you got to feed him. You got to clothe him. You got to do everything for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. God takes delight mm -hmm. in the helplessness of me. Amen. Right. Oh, let me tell you today. Excuse me. Listen, though. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Oh, it's, listen, though. Oh, brother, consider your calling. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think about verse number 24, 25 that goes on. Consider your calling. See your calling. How? Not many yeah. wise in the flesh yeah. are chosen. Not many mighty. Mm -hmm. He talks about, and not many noble has, has he called. But when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he lets us know those whom he's called. He says, but of them, he says, excuse me, I said verse 24, but I mean, verse 26, for ye see your calling, brethren, how there not many wise men out of the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things That's of the world to That's confound it. the wise, mm -hmm. and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty, the base things of the world, and things which are despised had God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to know Amen. the things that are. Yeah. Uh -huh. That no flesh it, should brother. glory in his presence. And he goes on, but of him yeah. are ye in Christ. Uh -huh. Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and yeah. righteousness yeah. and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glory, let him glory That's good, in huh? the Lord. Yeah. Let's just be perfectly honest this morning. Right. If we can boast, my friend, we pray the teacher. If we can boast, we make a big deal of it, how we have cooperated and helped God. But I don't even know something today. Yeah. That when we look at this particular yeah. scripture today, the Bible says yeah. you are not in Christ Jesus because you will or because you ran, but you are in Christ Jesus because of him. Yeah. It was his doing. Yeah. He took you out of that and put you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And Christ has been to us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, yeah. and redemption. Yeah. Many want to right. say that God's high, highest priority is to preserve the free will of man. But scripture doesn't say that. Right. Scripture says that according as it is written, he that glory, let him glory in the Lord. And how can you glory in something that you had parted? You can only glory in something because it was so marvelous. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. But if God did it, there was nothing about me that more than God and caused him to do what he did. Yeah. I stand amazed. Yeah. I stand in awe because he did it in spite of me. Yeah. It was of his own good pleasure yeah. that he saved me right and yeah. called me. The one who's in amazement is not God. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, the one who was full of surprise is not God. That's right. Oh, this is what he intended. Yeah. The beginning. Yeah. Oh, Yes. Yes. Think about when Paul was encouraging his son Timothy. He's going through persecution. He 
is not only receiving that persecution from the outside, but it's receiving persecution even within the church. Boy. I'm not talking about the, the body that is, but I'm talking about those that come and assemble together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the assembly. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he's taking persecution for the doctrine that he preaches. I think about how Paul had to admonish him, let him know that God had given him the spirit of fear. Right. Oh, this spirit of fear he's talking about, he's not talking about uh, the spirit of fear when he comes down to, to building a building or going to buy your car or, or going out and, and, and attacking a business venture. That's what he thought. That's not what he's talking about. Right. He's talking about this fear that will arise up because there are those who will kill the body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There are those who want to lay their hands on you right. and destroy you right. because of the truth that you preach. Uh -huh. right. You know, I no wonder, I think about this, we are not to fear him right. that is able to kill the body, right. but fear him that is able to show, destroy both body and soul yeah. into hell. Yeah. But think about this, the kind of fear that, that, that will rise up, that will cause you to say, well, I, maybe I don't need to say that, or maybe I don't need to do this. All of that compounding upon itself and Putting it in front to you. Yeah. Causing you mm -hmm. to be timid mm -hmm. in your preaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in your testifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in your living for Christ. But Paul, listen, don't tell yeah. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Nor of me. Yeah. This yeah. Christian. Yeah. But be thou partaker yeah. of the afflictions of Christ yeah. through the gospel. And it talks about in that same scripture how, how God, how he has saved us. He said, according, uh, he said, be thou a, he said, be thou a particular affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us for the holy calling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before. The world began. Amen. Amen. Oh, notice this. When we look at Romans chapter 9, and it says, It's not of him that will of him, but of God that showeth mercy. And God having that compassion upon sinful man. Do you know this? And like I said before, sinful man deserves destruction. He deserves God's wrath. He deserves an eternity in hell. I'm going to tell you today, and, and if, if God had not chosen, to save some. All right. And all would be lost. That's right. Yes. And God had not chosen yes. to save. We yes. think about the calling that he has sent out to the gospel. That general call that is going out. We see that as is mentioned even in Matthew chapter 22. 14 with the parable of the wedding feast. And Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 16. As it does with the parable of, of the workers. But you'll find that at the end of the parable of the wedding feast. It says for many are called. But few are chosen. And you'll find how many were bitten to that feast. Yeah. But they ignored that invitation, ignored that call. Yeah. But you'll find that as Paul deals with that effectual calling in the gospel, it is a call that goes out and it doesn't work inwardly within man. Right. It just doesn't hear, it just doesn't hit um, the, the, the ears that sit on the side of our heads. But this effectual call sends a word to our heart. Right. This special call brings about an opening of the heart. Yeah. And the God who calls is the God who also effects that call yeah. and brings to, to fruition whatever he has desired, whatever he has intended. Yeah. He brings it to pass. Praise God. I, I love what he talks about in, in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 55 again. He talks about how the word that goes forth from his, from his mouth, it shall not return void. Oh, you might see a whole house full of people asleep yeah. who didn't respond to the calling. But I want you to know something today, that God is working on the inside. There's somebody out of the crowd that's wrestling with this word. There's somebody in the crowd that's troubled. There's somebody who is giving grace at that particular time to respond to the gospel call. Yeah. Everyone else will hear that message, yeah. and it'll go in one ear and out the other. But there's one, or maybe two or three, a few that sits in that number that cannot leave because this word has had such an impact on them. They walk out of this building and it's messing with them at home. They, they, they walk out of this building and they're at work and it's messing with them right there. You'll find that God is, 
is intended to bring them in. He sent out a divine subpoena, if you will. You come. Yeah, that's right. And if you don't come, the judge is going to send for you. Yeah. There's some men that he's going to send that will bring you to court. Don't worry, beloved. His elect is coming. Yeah, that's right. He sent out a divine subpoena that cannot be ignored. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, he does. Yes. Amen. Thank God for So God shows mercy. <laughs> yes. God shows mercy. Yeah. Lord, oh, think about it. Our scripture, this is on Titus chapter 3, verse 5. God, it's, it's not the works which we have done. Right. Yes. Oh, when you look at the list prior to that verse, oh, how we ourselves were sometimes deceived. Mm -hmm. We were foolish. Yes. We were serving divers thus and pleasures. Yes. Right. We were hateful and we were. Hateful to one another, we were hating God. Yeah. But it's an all but then the kindness of God toward men appeared. Yeah. None of the works of righteousness, yeah. which we have done, yeah. but according to his mercy, he saved us. Yeah. For the washing of regeneration yeah. and renewing of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Glory, preach it, brother. He saved us.
accomplished it and did it. Yes. We yes. pray for praise the law. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Notice this, we got to close. Verse number seven. But the scripture said to the Pharaoh, even for the same purpose of our ready to see you, that I might show my power in thee, mm -hmm. and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, That's right. and whom he will he pardon. Right. Right. Pharaoh, and we think about Pharaoh coming into power. Now oftentimes in ancient history, when Pharaohs would come into power, first of all, let me say this, that the ancient Egyptians did not call their rulers Pharaohs. In fact, it was a term that came to being when the Israelites were enslaved to the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that this term really means a great house. However, this great house came to be attributed also to the ruler of that house. Right. So he's called Pharaoh. I don't know specific, specifically what the Egyptians called him before, uh, the scripture said his name was Pharaoh, but the scripture says, calls him Pharaoh. Now notice this, as it deals with the history of God's deliverance of the Hebrews. Uh -huh. Now, I want to say this, that when the Pharaohs came into power, oftentimes, it was by birth. In other words, they were succeeding, uh, they were a successor to the throne because perhaps their father was the Pharaoh. Or their father was a ruler. Another way whereby they were elected was that the elite of the society, the prominent of the society, right. would elect certain persons uh -huh. that showed promise. Uh, that that uh, uh, or maybe the, the 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 best of their of their community. Right. They would have elections whereby these individuals would be elected into this office. And it would take years for this to happen, for them to actually become the ruler of Egypt. Right. But notice this. And this particular individual that was ruling at the time of Israel's enslavement, the time that God brought Moses to be delivered, I want you to know this. Though we look at that entire process of how Pharaoh was coming to power, but look at God's sovereignty. In verse number 17, God says, now we understand that they might have elected him into office. We understand that he came into office because he succeeded his father. However, God takes responsibility for what has happened. And he says, I have raised yes, thee up. I have raised thee up. Yeah. Th that, that's interesting because God's saying, I have raised thee up. I have brought him to the world stage. I have empowered him, if you will. Yeah. I have caused him to arise right. and to exist. Right. I brought him to this place of power. I raised him up. And that, that's good news, beloved, because that shows us that all of the smaller details yeah. that we think that God right. is absent from, God is even orchestrating that's that. Right. That's yeah, right. that's right. He's even orchestrating the minor details of the wicked. Mighty God. Right. Yeah. To bring his purpose into fruition. It happened just the way God orchestrated. Yeah. And now he is in power. Yeah. That's right. And God says, I put him there. Mm -hmm. That's right. In fact, I want you to notice mm -hmm. what Daniel says about that. When Daniel, when King Nebuchadnezzar had been given a dream that he could not interpret. And in fact, the wise men, astrologers of uh, the wise men of Babylon at the time, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he was one of those kind of guys that didn't really take any other alternatives. Right. Right. He told them, look, you make known this dream to me or you die. With pressure, right? <laughs> and that, that, that's pressure when he says, either you make known this dream to me or you're going to die. Right. Right. I wish Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they heard news of it. And Daniel chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar wouldn't even tell him what the dream was. Mm -hmm. God came to Daniel good. and showed him not only the dream, right. but also the interpretation of the dream. Right. But I want you to notice what Daniel says about the God of the Bible when God had made known the interpretation of this dream. Notice in Daniel 2 and verse number 20, it says that Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. 
for wisdom and might are his. Yeah. Mm. And he changed the times and seasons. He removed the kings and set it up kings. Yeah. He given wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. God says, I put kings yeah. in power. Yeah. And I take kings out of power. Yeah. yeah. That's right. No right. use of you getting upset about Barack Obama. Right. If he's in power, it's because God put him there. All right. right. There were many people that were upset about Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. When in his reign of in his reign of tyranny, but I want you to know something today. God put Hussein right. in power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God put Adolf Hitler yeah. in power. Right. In fact, God, let's just know in uh, in Daniel chapter four how he gives this king, these kingdoms to whomever he will. In fact, he gives the kingdoms to the basis of men. Right. The basis of men. What I'm talking about, these are not men of high moral character. Right. 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 These are not so much worshipers and those that glorify God. But God says, I mean, he puts these kingdoms in the hands of the scum of the earth. Right. Right. You can say that morally. The scum of the earth, right. he puts it in their hands. So if there's a power or a regime or a government that exists, whether you like it or whether you don't, mm. God put it in power. Yeah. Right. Right. You can look at Romans chapter 13 and find out how there's no power that exists except God ordains it, right? Amen. Right. God None. Right. Right. And we see that government serves as a restraint to evildoers. Evil doers. That's right. Right. Just think about if we had an how bad it would be. It would be horrible. But anyway, as we go on, God says, I raise you up that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. You'll find, as we get ready to close, that Pharaoh, God, are you saying this? Are you saying that you raised Pharaoh up so he could tell you no? Are you saying that you raised Pharaoh up so he could resist your will? Are you saying that you raised Pharaoh up because he would, in other words, think himself to be stronger than you. God raised him up because what he wanted to do yeah. was show Israel that even the most powerful man right. on the earth right. at that time right. is nothing to me. Right. That's right. That's right. The most powerful man, and I'm going to do it in stages. Because you have to understand that Pharaoh thought himself to be a god. Right. But God showed him by, at the end of those plagues that he sent him on Egypt, Pharaoh, he showed him that he was not sovereign. Right. In fact, if you look at all the plagues, those plagues were directed against the gods that were worshipped in Egypt. Right. It was a, a really against them because if they're so powerful, then why can't you permit these plagues? <laughs> Either you're going to have to admit that they're not powerful enough to do it, or you're going to have to admit they sinned. Right. Now that goes to they didn't send it. God did this because they are no gods. They are no gods. But anyway, so, but yeah, as he goes on, he said, Raise it, I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. You remember when Israel invaded Jericho? Praise God. Yeah. Do you remember when Ray had the heart? Yeah. Yeah. Said about, about God? Yeah. Heathen nations, the Philistines, you know what they said about God? Yeah. And in, 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 in first Samuel, mm -hmm. all I'm talking about his acts and what his works in Egypt was spread abroad to the fact that the heathen nations they melted in their heart right. at the sight of Israel. I mean they knew they were no match because of Israel's God. Right. 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 His name, with his his acts, his his character, his works was published for all the world today. And I'm telling you something, we're still talking about them today, aren't we? Yeah. He raised Pharaoh up yeah. to resist him for that purpose. But notice this, what he did for Moses in revealing himself, he withheld himself from Pharaoh. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Let me tell you something today. That's good. The greatest thing God can do for an individual is that he home. Yes. Glory. That God bring him low. Yes. That he might lift him up. Yes. Yes. That's right. Oh, let me tell you, that, 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 that Pharaoh, oh, if, if, even if you see him at the end, Pharaoh never made really an acknowledgement of God's person. Although he knew that God was more powerful than he was. 
and then he could not stop what he was doing. But you'll never see Pharaoh bending the knee willfully. Right. It was forceful subjugation. Right. But I'm going to take you to King Nebuchadnezzar. We're going to get out of here. And I want you to see the difference in that of King Nebuchadnezzar and that of Abraham. Let's go to Daniel chapter 4. We'll close. If God chooses to bring you low, you are blessed. Yeah. yeah. If God yeah. chooses to reveal your sin and, 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 and reveal your sin and your offense against him, yeah. but then change your heart yeah. to embrace his truth, you are blessed today. Yeah. Because he does not do that for everyone. Right. We find that indicative in the parable of the sword, back in chapter 13, right? That's right. Notice this we're very quickly we'll close. And you'll find it today in chapter 4 how really Nebuchadnezzar was really speaking in the first person. And you'll find it later on in the scripture, he goes into the third person. But uh, let's. Uh, hmm. Let's go on down to verse number 30. Okay. <clears throat> so first of all, let's, let's, let's not start there. Let's start with the, uh, with the dream that was given to him. Okay, here it is. In verse number 9, he says, O Belteshazzar, master of magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. We find that God has given him a dream. And so it's another dream that is going to need some interpretation. Thus Daniel is brought in. You have to understand, see, if, if, if Daniel can't interpret these dreams, he's toast. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's no thing, but well, I couldn't interpret the dream. But uh, can you give me another chance? No. If you couldn't interpret the dream, you die. That's right. God preserved. I mean, those magicians and uh, those other people, they, he, he preserved them through Daniel. That's right. That's right. I mean, if, if, if God doesn't show him the interpretation, that's it. That's right. Because Nebuchadnezzar doesn't play it. And notice he says, Oh, Belteshazzar, well, master, master of magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret trouble thee. Tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. There he goes again. He doesn't tell Daniel what he saw, but then God shows him what he saw, right? He said, Thus were the visions of my head and my bed I saw, and behold, a tree. No, excuse me, let me say that again. He does reveal it to Daniel this time. He tells Daniel his dream. Let me correct myself. It says, Thus were the visions of my head in my bed, I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth. He can trust Daniel, so he reveals his dream to Daniel, so I'm correct that. And the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached in heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were, were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and all and it was meat for all the beasts of the field that had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud, and said thus, Hew down the tree, cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, scatter his fruit, let the beast get away from under, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, and the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beast and the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and in a man by the holy, by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the most that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. Mm -hmm. This dream I King Nebuchadnezzar have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. So we see right there, of course, as we confirmed before, he does tell him the dream. Now it says this, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me an interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not 
the dream or the interpretation of trouble But the Shazar answered and said, My Lord, the dream be to them that uh, be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation of to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest which grew was strong, and whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to the all the earth, whose leaves were fair, the fruit thereof much, and in it was sweet for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. Whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Heal the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let its portion be to the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him, or seven years. This is the interpretation of the king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee grass and mountain, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, over thee till thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas thy command to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy people shall be sure unto thee, after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Right. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and bring all thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Right. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. You see all that is transpired in him showing him the dream. And you'll find that even after he saw the dream, that Daniel called him to repentance. He called him to show fruit that is worthy of repentance. He calls him to repentance right there. Yeah. And guess what? God gives him a span of a year to repent. Mm. That's right. But notice what he says. The king spake and said, It's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power, for the honor of my majesty. Mm. Of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, Watch out. there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee, it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. They shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass and oxen. Seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruler and the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. Right. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men, did eat grass and oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles feathers, and his tails like birds' claws. And at the end of the day, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked at my eyes into heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the most high, and I praised him out of him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are rebuilt as nothing. And they do it according to his will, and the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand yeah. or say to him, What doest thou? Yeah. At the same time, my reason returned to me for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned to me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added me. I love that because God chose to humble King Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. God could have destroyed him and sent him plummeting into an everlasting hellfire. Right. But I want you to know something. We see God's mercy even be ex being extended yeah. to a Gentile king that yeah. worshiped other gods. Right, yeah. We find that Nebuchadnezzar saw God's working with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego yeah. right. in the fiery furnace. And yet, his decree was that no one was to speak anything against his God, but he continued on with his idolatry, right? That's right. Yeah. No, 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 no inner, no impact was made upon his heart. He saw that. He saw God's body working in the fiery furnace. And you find that in Daniel chapter 4, that God had determined to humble him. Praise he Lord. brought him to the place yeah. to where Nebuchadnezzar had to look up. Amen. He had to look up. Amen. Oh, I want to tell you something today, that there is a blessing, and that's looking up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. To listen to the song that I was brought low. Yes. Right? Yes. And he 
lifted me. Oh, it's a good thing in looking up because I think about when Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross. In fact, he tells Nicodemus in John chapter 3 about the serpent that was put up on the pole. And you'll find that even in the Old Testament, it was said to those that would look up and see the serpent on the pole, they would look up and live. Right? That's right. You'll, 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 you'll find here that you'll find here that Nebuchadnezzar was brought to the place that all of men have to be brought to yeah. before they're able to glorify and praise yeah. the Lord of heaven. Right? Right. Oh, I want you to know something today. That this Nebuchadnezzar, he was put in such a mental state that he was not able, that his kingdom was taken away from him. This mental illness prevented him from ruling his kingdom. And God sent him out and put it amongst the beasts right. for seven years, I tell you. For seven years until Nebuchadnezzar looked up. And I want to tell you something today. That after God had humbled him, I want to tell you today that we can say that there was a converted heart with Nebuchadnezzar. Right. How do I know this? Amen. Because in verse 37, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar starts with now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You saw how Nebuchadnezzar was then. Yeah. Yeah. He thought that he had built this mighty Babylon. He thought that all that he possessed, yeah. he was the source of it. Yeah. But I want you to know something today, that when an individual has been humbled by God, right, there is a life that will spring forth yeah. that will be consistent with that humility. Yeah. Good. Nebuchadnezzar was able to declare, now, nah, meaning that something has taken place. Yeah. I used to be this way. But now, God has given me a different perspective on himself. God has opened my heart. At one time, I was praising me. But I want you to know the words of Nebuchadnezzar. He said, now, I am a Nebuchadnezzar. I praise, extol, and honor the king of heaven. That's good because when he says that he praised God, it's the Hebrew word which means to adore. When he says that he extols God, it's the Hebrew word which means I exalt him. And when he says, honor, I honor, that is the Hebrew word for I glorify him. Notice this. He became monotheistic. All right. All of a sudden. <laughs> and he praises Praise the God of heaven. And notice what he says about him. He says, all whose works are true. Yeah. His way is judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Right. <laughs> all that right. Professor can say about this God of heaven is that everything he does is right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. 